Which party's plan gets your vote on migration policy? Now, I'll run through some of them. So the Labour Party, their approach was unveiled by the Shadow Home Secretary, Yvette Cooper. It focuses on reducing reliance on foreign labour by training unemployed Britons for jobs in care, construction and engineering. And the aim is to end the current system that incentivises businesses to recruit overseas by offering a 20% discount. Uh, in the meantime, the Tories, now they're pushing ahead with their controversial plan to deport asylum seekers to Rwanda. Despite legal challenges and delays, yet no planes have even left the UK. And then on the other side, Reform UK, led by Richard Tice, proposes a higher national insurance rate for businesses employing foreign workers. Now, their plan aims to curb the UK's dependency on cheap overseas labour and reinvest the additional revenue in training and apprenticeships for young people. Right, so for the Great British debate this hour, I'm asking which party the plans that you're listening to gets your vote on migration. Of course, there are other parties as well, and we'll have a look at the Liberal Democrats' policy too. I'm joined now by human rights lawyer Harjap Singh Bangal, author and broadcaster Amy Nickel, journalist Jonathan Liss, and also Gary Mond, he's the chairman for the Jewish Assembly. Uh, right, I'm going to start uh, with you, Amy Nickel Turner. Uh, what's the question, Alan? Oh, did you not listen? I've just done a whole read up to it. Which party gets your vote on migration policy? Oh, OK, right. So to me, the definition of madness, as Einstein said, is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. And if we look at every time people have voted for the Conservatives with a hope that it would lower migration, it's only got worse. The numbers have only got higher. So I think just from a purely rational and practical perspective, it's got to be the Labour Party because they seem to have a real plan that will work and will deal with larger numbers of people and address the problem more holistically rather than just demonising um, a small percentage of migrants. I, I really think that the way that they deal with the issue is it has a lot more dignity to it. I think that it's bringing a bit of decency back into the debate. They're not using it as a political football. They're thinking practically. Um, when you mentioned Yvette Cooper's um, suggestion about tackling the skills shortages, because why is this number with legal migration going up, 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 up? It's because the list of um, shortages in certain areas are so great. Three, uh, the, the construction rates, the shortages has tripled over the past mm. three, few years. Engineering has doubled over the past few years. So if we can train our own people, then that's brilliant, isn't it? Mm. Well, that, um, on the front I, of yeah, I, I, yes, it, it sounds like, like an interesting plan. Gary Mond. The irony is that there are elements of all three of those proposals that actually have got some attraction. Certainly, I was a great supporter of Suella Braverman when she was Home Secretary. And the notion then was essentially to stop the boats. She didn't succeed because she had a lot of barriers put in her way. And I would like to see her policy renewed. I do support the idea of uh, reducing net migration with, with, with better training, if that can be done. That's, it's not a, a bad idea. And, and, and also the Reform UK's idea of actually increasing employers' national insurance contributions for overseas workers. I, I would also agree with that too. Mm. And also, the um, Kestama talked about a uh, border command. I mean, how did that idea land on you, Gary? I think that we need to do all in our power to stop illegal migration. As for legal migration, we ought to have something done much more formally, uh, particularly going for something along the lines of what the Australian point system has been. We have been in a complete mess on the whole issue of immigration for many years. Mm -hmm. OK, I'm going to go to you, Jonathan Liss. Well, I am certainly no fan of the Conservative uh, migration policy, which has failed even on its own metrics. Uh, the Conservatives are desperate to distract attention from the fact that obviously uh, migration has gone up, net migration has gone up under their watch. That's partly for entirely um, good reasons. That's because we, we, if students still want to come to British universities, the Conservatives are boasting about having fewer foreign students coming to our universities. They help prop up the university sectors, which is one of Britain's remaining success stories. It makes no sense at all to stop foreign students from coming here. But Labour is still aping the Conservatives' rhetoric on the boats. Look, obviously, 
um, the small boats are a problem. That's a problem for the people who are getting on the boats as much as anything. If we had a humane migration policy which allowed safe and legal routes into this country, that allowed processing centres to be set up in France, for example, so asylum seekers could actually um, have their asylum uh, claims processed in France before coming here, that would actually uh, end the, 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 the smuggling trade overnight and actually be a humane result. So Labour, I'm voting for Labour in the election, but certainly not on their migration policy, which I'd have to support the Greens. Oh, really interesting. Hard jump seeing Bangle. Are, are these uh, pledges in terms of, is it realistic when they're talking about stopping the boats and, tra and, and dealing with modern slavery laws and things like that? I mean, are, let's have a look. Yeah. Let's have a look at the facts now. Right. The facts are that Conservatives talk the talk, but have not walked the walk. They've not stopped the boats. The boats weren't a problem before but they've all become a problem now, and migration has gone up. So do we trust anything they say? They can't get a flight off to Rwanda. Pretty much the public mind might be made up on that. Labour most definitely have got grabbed a great idea in stopping the gangs. That is definitely one uh, problem that needs to be solved. These gangs, which have operating for 20 years from the French coast, sending people to the Kent coast, the same route, same method, yet we can't catch them because despite our elite units, they're 10 steps ahead of us. I don't believe that for a second. If we can catch bin Laden and Gaddafi and Saddam Hussein hold up in their strongholds, we can't catch these gangs operating on these shores. It just does not make sense. Um, the safe routes definitely needs to be an option. Italy has done the same with Albania. It's, it's just done a deal to open a processing center there. Why haven't we opened one with our neighbours when France actually offered this to us when Priti Patel was Home Secretary and we refused it. We refused a safe processing centre. That will stop at least some, if not all, people crossing the channels. I don't believe in punishing British, British businesses at all or, you know, or British homeowners or anything like that. Why are we punishing British businesses? What we should have been doing is training our own at the same time. Once our own are trained, then by all means put caps on foreigners coming over to take that over. However, in the last 14 years, and especially since Brexit, we were promised that we would be our own would be trained. A gap still remain in hospitality, in construction, and also in the care sector. Now, you can't put a cap on the care sector because that will crumble in virtually months if we do that. And we're already seeing the effects of the, the policy of not allowing their dependents to come over because care, carers just aren't choosing to come here anymore. Mm. So don't our own. Let's have a mixture and a sensible policy. And I, th I think all three parties are missing the ball here. We might need an amalgamation. And let's talk to the people, British businesses. Why we punish them with further tax? We they already charge. We already charge per extra one thousand pound per year per worker to a British business to call them over. On top of that, they have to pay thirty eight thousand seven hundred to a person just to call them over to work here. And a junior doctor only gets thirty two and a half. Mm. So it's well, I think crazy. I think that this conversation is quite difficult to have when we're talking about irregular migration and legal migration yeah. in one debate, because you can yeah. agree with, uh, like Jonathan said, certainly with um, the Labour policy on legal migration, whereas I too would say the Greens policy uh, with the safe and legal routes is a lot is a lot better. But it's hard to talk both of the things at the same time. Well, what about the Liberal Democrats then? Because they're fighting for fair, effective immigration a system. They want to scrap the Conservatives' hostile environment and instead invest in officers' training and technology to tackle smuggling, trafficking and modern slavery. They want to transfer powers mm. over to work visas, overseas students and, um, and asylum uh, from the Home Office to their other departments and establish a new sort of arm length unit, a bit like the Labour Party, it sounds like. I mean, they're all on it. But if you had to sort of decide and choose one out of those parties, which one would get your vote? Jonathan Liss. Well, I, as I said, I would support the Green Party because they are unabashedly pro-immigration. And I think that Labour has been very reticent to make the case for immigration over the last few years. I think that's regrettable. Um, Keir Starmer famously pledged in 2020 to defend free movement as we left the EU. That sadly uh, didn't happen. I think that was a great loss, actually, uh, to, to British people. Um, but, you know, that's, that argument has now ended. Uh, but I think that we do need to separate, uh, separate these issues, uh, as you know, we were just saying about sort of, you know, regular and irregular migration. It's only illegal migration because the government has made it illegal. The government can make it legal for people mm. to come here 
on, 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 registered, on registered vessels and then to claim asylum, which is a, as oh, an absolute well, human well, right. Well, you might, you might, under you, you might find that you, you exacerbate the problem doing it that way. Gary Mond, or just name your party. Which one uh, do you think has the best deal in terms of migration, both legal and illegal? Well, I think the Conservative Party under Suella Braverman, if they have her policies and they actually are implemented, that will be the optimum policy. OK. Uh, Amy Nickell. If you had to... I think it's going it to... It would definitely be Labour. It would not be the Tories. Look at the results of the last 14 years. They speak for themselves. And the people agree with me because for one of the first times, perhaps... In, the, in recent history anyway. Well, then um, the people Poland have agreed with you. Is, is <laughs> by, <laughs> um, on this channel, perhaps. Um, polling is putting Labour ahead specifically on immigration policy. Uh, so, OK. Hard up saying Bangle. If you were to pick yeah, one out of the... I think it's got to be Labour. And, and I think why? Because they're talking sensible. We've seen the Conservatives in action. They're, you know, they, they haven't done it. They've dropped the ball on this. Are the other parties, according to the polls, going to get in? Doesn't really matter. It's a moot point. Um, it looks as if Labour are running away with the election. It probably will be Labour's policies. So let's see what Keir Starmer can do. Well, let's it'll, see if we can it, it'll be interesting war. what happens then if the Labour Party do win the next general election, because I think they'll have a, a sea of boats coming across with the good weather.